Hey everyone, how you all doing? Yeah, got me dad's jumper on again. I bet you're sick of seeing me in this jumper, aren't you? But there you go. You know, something becomes personal to you and you just tend to keep it close to you. Okay, so I've just dropped down the um, resolution on this one. So we're going to be recording this one in ProRes 422 and not HQ. It's just a little bit under because the massive files, as you know, these ProRes ones, and they're great when you get them into your sort of um, video editing program. They're great. But the downside of them is it's getting them over the internet and not loaded and that's when you need to go into say um a more friendly codec but it's a learning curve right what i want to talk to you about is um blink and your whole jw life will be over before you know it now i was having some thoughts the other day about what happened back in 1980 when my brother Colin, he asked me to come on a Bible study with him. Uh, he was studying with this uh, professional person known as Mr. Brand. And now Colin uh, isn't really an academic person, my brother. He's actually, at, in the past, he's from a fighting stock. You know, he was a boxer, uh, a street fighter. And, uh, and he's always got by in a physical way, you know, if anybody's braced him or if anybody's shortchanged him uh, in life, he's always uh, stood up to them and give them a good hiding. But he put all that aside and he became a Jehovah's Witness and got baptised around about the same time as me, around about 1980. And he was trying really, really, really hard, really hard to get his um, his former life in order that's what we all do, you know. That's the, what we were in the past. Doesn't mean that's the way we are when we start studying. We, you, you put away the old personality, don't you? And, and you try and put on the new personality. You've heard this phrase before. So he was doing that. And so we got this study with Mr. Brand. And Mr. Brand's past personal life was he's a professional person, made a lot of money, uh, made mistakes, um, was willing to share those mistakes, had loves, lost loves, and he was a damn sight older than we were. I mean, I think I was only about 17 at the time, and my brother was 19. And that was his, uh, his first Jehovah's Witness Bible study, was Mr. Brand. So he said, do you want to come along? Do you want to attend this Bible study with me? And you can meet Mr. Brand. And I said, yeah, I don't mind. You know, young 17-year-old Jehovah's Witness, just starting out his life. Don't mind, you know, sitting in and having a chat with him. So I did. And cutting a long story short, Mr. Brand, all the way through the conversation, was just trying to get to know me. He knew Colin, because he'd been studying with him, but he was trying to get to know me. Uh, and seeing whether we were similar or whether I was different from him. And in a lot of ways, I am different from my brother. You know, my brother is in the past from physical background, fighting, and I, I wasn't. You know, I was more from academic side of things, you know, and uh, more for a negotiator of in life. If uh, I ran into problems, I'd try and negotiate my way out of it. <laughs> you guys are thinking, oh, Martin, you're just a coward. Well, no, because I've had a few fights. Don't get me wrong, I've had quite a lot of fights. But certainly not to the same level as our kid, Colin. I mean, he was forever fighting back then. Anyway, I, I'm digressing again. Let's get back to Mr. Brand, Colin's study. So at the end of um, the study, and then we cl and closed in prayer, because, you, you know, you always finalise your study with a prayer, don't you? And Mr. Brown was willing to let Colin do a prayer, and which was really good of him because, to be honest with you, his intellectual ability was was tenfold compared to me and Colin. He knew quite a lot about life. He'd experienced life, and we were just starting out on our life. So, yeah, huge difference. 
But I remember he said something to me that just stayed in my mind all this time. And uh, I've just recently recalled it to my memory. And he said, Martin, I said, yeah. He says, Martin, um, don't take this the wrong way or anything like that, he said. And it's all said with um, a spirit of endearment. I guess that's what he said. Uh, and no malice. But he said, um, blink and your life will be over. And th your JW life, people, will be over as quick as that. You can't comprehend as a young person when someone tells you something like that, that if you blink and you and you delay or making decisions, before you know it, your life will be over. So you will, that means that you're going to have regrets about things that you could have done the right way and you chose not to. And uh, I've just recently thought about that. And it's only now, now I'm in my 60s, that I realised what he was saying. And he did say it, um, certainly with no malice. He said it in, in, a, in a sort of a calm way and I suppose in a concerned way as well. Blink, Martin, and your life will be over. And that's exactly how I feel right now. I know I don't look maybe my true age, you know, because I've not smoked and I've never taken drugs and... I've always tried to keep myself fit, but I do feel as if my life is now getting towards those, what they call them, is it the twilight years? I mean, I'm not retired yet, I'm still working, but I'm thinking along the lines of what he said, whereas 20, 30 years ago, I couldn't think like that. It was impossible to think like that. Uh, isn't it um, strange how our thinking can be, can be turned upside down by simply getting wisdom and becoming older? And that's what does it. You get older, you see things differently. You get a sense of your own mortality. You, you start to believe that... Uh, I suppose, in a way, you, you start to become more like King Solomon. I mean, King Solomon was the one that recognised that living your life without the inclusion of God in it is completely pointless. And I think about this, and, and, and I think if I was an atheist, right, if I was a full-blown atheist and I didn't believe in God, then I would have to get maximum amount out of my life while I was here because there is nothing else. Nothing else to look forward to. So I'd have to go helter-skelter, full pelt, and get enjoyment out of life. But I don't need to do that if, I'm, if I've got the hope of salvation, if, I'm, if I believe there's a God. I can bide my time, I can be more patient, and I can build up uh, my spiritual standing in the hope that I may be recognised and I may be remembered to be included in that book of life. And that's why I suddenly say to myself, um, I'd rather be a creationist than an atheist, because at least we are looking forward that way. But where's an atheist looking? Where does he look to? Well, you can't be looking at anything other than what is immediately in front of him with, with science. And, and that kind of thing. And that's the only thing that he, put, he puts any hope in. Whereas the Christian, he, he puts his hope in faith, which is the assured expectation of things hoped for and yet not perceived. So that means that you can have faith that something is in front of you, even though it's, you can't actually see it. You'd never get that, would you, with an atheist? It always has to be something completely solid completely solid that he can touch and say, yes, that's real. That's real because I touched it. 
But you don't get that, do you? With God. You don't get to touch him. You get to feel him if he's in your heart. And that's uh, all you get. Right. I've done 10 minutes now, and that will be quite a big file. So I'll see you again, peeps. <laughs>